Hello, welcome back to A Service Dog's Partner. And today, Sassy and I would like to discuss choosing a service dog. When you think of a service dog or a therapy dog, uh, you normally think of a German Shepherd, normally for us, a C and I dog. Or you'll see, think of a uh, Golden Retriever, a Labrador Retriever, or what's becoming very popular is a Labradoodle. Uh, but as you can see from Sassy here, I did not go for those normal traits. And you don't have to yourself. Uh, those are just normal uh, ones that tend to, that have been found to be very common and so, suit many of people's needs. But what you really are looking for is a dog that suits your needs and then going from there. Let's talk about different types of dogs and what you're looking into. Uh, my family and I have actually owned three other dogs before Sassy. Our very first one was a Collie, a rogue Collie. Think of uh, the old TV show Lassie and you'll get that type of dog. And actually her name was Lassie. We named her after the TV show. And uh, when we had her, she's very long haired and grooming her was a big challenge. Now owning her, she was great with kids, very friendly. We were able to easily train her, uh, very smart very good family dog and very good uh, watchdog, guard dog, uh, just a really good addition to the family. But the tr but uh, when a dog sheds and they shed twice a year, first in spring for their summer coat and then in fall for their winter coat, and sometimes it could take weeks for it to come in. It's a big hassle. And with a long haired uh, dog, well with any dog, you have to help them by brushing them out. And a long haired dog like what Lassie was, it was a big deal. We went outside and even though we were collecting the fur in trash bags, there was still fur all over the place. Uh, the other thing is we lived in California and the area we lived in was, um, it got into three digits and it was really hot for her. So what we would do is we would trim her coat and even um, buzz cut it to, I called it looking like a lamb. This is basically what she looked like. Now here's the thing. With a collie, at least our collie, it was okay. Her, her fur grew back and it was all right. But other dogs, like a husky, you do not want to do that to them because it ruins their coat. So before you decide to do that, if you're in a hot area and you think it'd be a good idea to do that to your dog, look up if that's a good idea. Talk to your vet, talk to a trainer, look online to see if that's a good idea because you don't want to um, ruin your dog's coat and have there be long-term problems. Now, when, our do when Lassie passed away, we got a Golden Retriever. We were looking at a dog that wouldn't have, we wouldn't have to wor work so hard with the grooming. We didn't have, our lives were becoming much more bu busy and a lot of stuff was going on and we didn't have, we knew we wouldn't have the time to properly take care of the grooming of a long haired dog like Lassie was, even though we loved the breed and we loved Lassie. So we got a Golden Retriever who we named Fiona, Fee for short. Effie was a short haired golden retriever. There are long haired golden retrievers, just so you know. We specifically look for short hair. And yes, she still shed a lot and we still had to make sure we brushed her and groom her. She still had a lot of hair we had to clean up, but she was much easier to clean up. And the thing with golden retrievers is you can't wash them very often because of the oils in their fur. Uh, if you wash them too much, the oils come out and it's not good for their coat. And this is because they're hunting dogs, they're, do they're bird dogs, and they often go in the water and the water, the uh, oils on their uh, coat help, it, help the water go off, shed off so it doesn't stick to their uh, fur. So that's the reason why you can't wash them very often. I think you might want to check this, double check this, but I think about once a month it's okay to give them that really deep clean. Otherwise, just spraying them with water and helping uh, rinse off that dirt and then drying them off normally will work. And then brushing them out to um, get uh, dry dust off it will work. We then got, um, we had a fairly good sized house in California. Uh, we got it before uh, the area we were, we were in uh, started to really grow. So we had a good sized house and we figured we could get one small dog to be company for our Golden Retriever. And we got a Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Now this is the Corgi without the tail if you were confused on which one this is. And she w this is a short haired dog. And so a short haired dog 
is much easier to take care of. Yes, yes they still shed twice a year and they still shed a good amount of uh, fur. But again, shorter hair, much easier to brush. You're not going slowly through combing like, like with a long haired dog. You could just take a nice brush and run it through and it's much easier to clean and you're able to finish faster. And especially since she was a smaller dog, she, there was less body to do that with. <laughs> So having those three dogs before that, I was able to kind of figure out, okay, what type of dog am I looking for? I knew I was still going to have a busy schedule, so I knew a long-haired dog, even though I loved my call, our collie, was not going to be practical for my family. So I was looking between a Golden Retriever and a Rottweiler and went back and forth a lot, and I did research on, on both of those. My aunt, <laughs> my aunt had a Rottweiler. Yes, I'm talking about you. And he was the cutest thing. Okay, he was a bit overweight, so you do have to watch out that you don't overfeed these guys because they will get overweight. But he was the cutest. He was a big teddy bear, really. He was so sweet. We came over, they let us pet him, and he loved playing. Um, what we didn't know at the time, and we've discovered now, is that Rottweilers are normally a one-people person, means that they bond more to one person. They'll listen to everyone else, and they'll be they'll be lovely dubby to all other people. But they tend to listen and bond with one person. So the Sassy really more listens to me because she's my partner. She's my service dog. And while well, she'll go ahead and she'll listen to like my mom or my sister, but she'll do it begrudgingly. And if I'm in the same room, she's kind of looking around going, Mom, you really want me to do this? And I'm, go and I'm just ignoring her because I know, because I want her to get used to, yes, you're supposed to be listening to my mom, my, the people in my family or people that, I, that uh, she's going to, I know I've introduced her to and she can go ahead and listen to. Uh, there are pros and cons to having a dog that, uh, really bonds to one person and you want to look into just how strong that bond is there are some dogs that are so possessive that they really won't uh listen to other people at all other people at all and they can be um um it'd be a little more challenging to work with uh so sassy is actually even a more shorter hair than what my corgi was so i can even take a, a it's a little it's more easier to just wash her off i mean i got a, a hose and i'm just washing it off and all the dirt comes off and it's a lot easier to clean off so this is just one thing to consider is how much time you have for grooming because even with a short hair dog, you've got to make sure you groom. I mean, she, I still, t even though I could take her outside and wash her, there are sometimes I have to take her in to get washed just because I don't have the time. And you got to make sure you have money put aside for those times. Especially if you got a dog that loves water and wants to go jump in a pond, like mine did. <laughs> that was a fun experience. <laughs> But besides that, you also want to take into account um, energy-wise. Now, I mentioned the Husky earlier. Huskies are very, very energetic. Uh, they, th that's beca because they're sled dogs. They're used to pulling sleds and running through the, uh, the wilderness. That's what they were bred for, to pull these sleds and really, really, really run. So if you're going to get a Husky, you got to be prepared for taking them out every single day on at least a walk if not a run and then go back in and then be prepared to be spending at least a half an hour throwing a ball for them because they are going to be very energetic even if you take them out every single day and you're going for going for walks and uh, going to stores and working with them that's work it's not play they're going to want stuff that's going to be for also play uh then again if you are looking for something that's a little more mild the um they, you could look into a Great Dane. Now you wanted to thought that with these big, big dogs that are basically a small, uh, basically a good sized horse. <laughs> but they are very laid back dogs and they are very calm and they don't take a lot of energy. You could easily go for nice, simple walks with this dog. And what's real nice also, oh, hello, Char, that's our kitty. <laughs> One of our cats, I should say. Um, they have a much more calmer um, added uh, energy wise so you won't have to uh, exercise them as much but you do still want to exercise them you always want to exercise your animals it's just that this one could be at a more milder pace and not as often which can be a big uh, advantage if you live say in the city um, and you don't have a lot of places where your dog can run 
the other thing you want to take into consideration is uh, your family. Are you a single person? Do you have kids? Uh, are you elderly? Are you young? All of these take into consideration. Now, I mentioned my colleague. She's really good with children really really good with children so she was a really good dog but there are other dogs that may not be really good with children they're more better with adults so you're going to want to look into that uh then there's also okay what type of house do you have now i mentioned the great dane but i've had some people say that they had a, a studio apartment and their great dane was fine in there uh, so you want to look into that. Talk to other people who have these have these different dogs. Go on YouTube and look at people who have these dogs. Thank you, YouTube. So you could just look at all these different um, uh, people who, who can share their experiences with their different dogs. And then there's also books and the internet where you can get these different ideas. I could go over and talk about these, but there's just so many different dogs to go through <laughs> that um, we would be here for way, way too long. The other thing you want to look at is their med uh, any medical problems they may have. Some dogs that get uh, hip displacement very easily, some are more prone to getting cancer or going blind or deaf. So you need to look into that because if you do choose one of these dogs and they have that, you need to, to be prepared for pulling out medical bills if your dog gets that because just because they're prone to getting this doesn't necessarily mean they will get it but you want to be prepared it's kind of like you got diabetes in your family you're hoping you don't get it but you be prepared for it you take precautions to prevent it so it's the same with when you have a dog you take precautions and you have stuff put aside for in just in cases but look into that and see what it is you know what you're getting into um the other thing to think about is, um, I, uh, uh, let me see, I did say space. Uh, the other one is looking at a pure blood versus a mix. Now, like I said, the pure blood, uh, I was, as I was talking about, you, it's easier to look up what type of traits they're going to have. At the same time, uh, this dog will have more of those uh, medical problems I was talking about. Uh, it, those more, more often show up in pure bloods versus mix. Now, the problem with having a mix is that you're not entirely sure which traits from whichever breed they're in is going to be more prominent. They may get an equal mix of both dogs. They may get all the mix of one dog all the traits of one dog or they may get a split of it and you won't know until you start um, having the dog and really getting to know their character. Um, this is very hard to, to decide with puppies uh, especially because if you got one that is a really big dog and another one that's slightly smaller you're not sure which size it's going to be. Uh, in my opinion I would I would go with assuming it's the bigger one that way if you are worried about having a dog that's too big then you know this is probably not the dog you're going to want because you don't want to uh, adopt a dog and find out that this dog is just too big and then have to get the dog up. It's better to, it's, I always find it's better to try to find a dog that you know you're going to keep because it's just heart-wrenching to have to give up a dog um, because it doesn't work out in the family. We actually had to do that once. We found a really good family for her. She ended up going to um, a girl who lived on a farm. So we were, we were really happy she got to go to a new family. But it was really sad that we had to give her away. But we did that for the best of her because she just didn't fit in with the family. Um... So take that into account. If you, get a, if you do end up with a pet and the pet does not work, find a family for them. Uh, one of the best ways you can do is talk to family members or go to your vet. Sometimes they'll keep an eye out to see if someone will, is willing to um, uh, adopt this dog. Um, and um, really talk around and then try to figure out try to get to know the people you're going that's going to adopt your dog or whatever pet you're going to have whatever pet you have to um uh give up and i know there are many reasons that you may have to give up a dog uh such as um you have end up having to move to a smaller place and they don't allow dogs which is really really sad uh the good thing is that with service dogs they can't do that a service dog you have they have to allow you to um keep your dog 
Um, so moving off of that sad topic. Um, so basically be prepared for a mix of these different types of temperaments and look into both dogs. Now sometimes it's a little harder to decide which type of traits is which what type of dog is mixed uh, such as if you decide to buy a rescue. If you buy a rescue a lot of times they really don't know what type of dog they have. They can look at a dog and go okay this dog looks mainly Rottweiler but because she's a rescue we have to say that she's a Rottweiler mix but we have no idea what's what. <laughs> uh, with Sassy we are guessing. Uh, someone said that it looked like that she was mixed with Hound and we are wa the every time watching her traits we discovered that she is much thinner than most uh, Rottweiler. She has more um, daintier legs for more running and jumping versus the stockier legs that are more for power. Um, she has a nose that gets her in trouble. She she really loves to follow different scents. And she loves water. Now, I don't know if Rottweilers love water, but this one really loves water. <laughs> I mean, she jumped in her pond. Remember I said she ha I had to go and t really give her a good wash because she jumped in the pond? <laughs> that was her. That was the reason why. So, um, that is something that you do have to take a risk with when you buy a, uh, a, a rescue, is you're not going to know what type of dog it is. Um, and sometimes they look at a dog and the dog is so mixed with uh, a mixture of dogs that they just really don't know. And thank you, Sassy. <laughs> it, um, don't be discouraged by that. Sassy down. Don't be discouraged by that because but one of the nice things is that these uh, the humane sh uh, shelters are really good at allowing you to come and meet the dog. You get to know them and uh, a lot of times because the Humane Society people take them on walks and get to know them, they can kind of give you an idea of what type of characteristics this dog is showing. And sometimes they can tell you what the background is that they have come from. So these are just things to think of when you are looking at a dog. Really, really do your research uh, because this will tell, help you decide what type of dog you need for a companion dog, a therapy dog, or a service dog. Because um, everyone's needs are different. Everyone's needs are different. And every dog, even, uh, when they, even if they are pure blood, they're all different. So really look into your research, get to know the dog uh, as best as you can when you first meet them, and just love them. Love them. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.